Hello, I'm Christopher Silverstein. I'm Michael Cisneros. And I'm Matthew Martone. And this is the Skylab Engineering Failure. Skylab was launched May 14, 1973 at 1.30 p.m. from the Kennedy Space Center. Skylab was an unmanned station which was launched into orbit by a Saturn V booster. The purpose of the Skylab mission was to have an orbital workshop in orbit to sustain people to live there for a long period of time. Almost immediately after liftoff, the rocket began to have technical problems due to vibrations. A critical meteoroid shield ripped off, taking the craft's two solar panels with it, and a piece of the shield wrapped around the other panel kept it from deploying. Because of the loss of the solar panels, Skylab was maneuvered so its remaining solar panels faced the sun to provide as much electricity as possible. The loss of the meteoroid shield and the positioning of Skylab caused the workshop temperatures to rise to 126 degrees Fahrenheit. On May 25, 1973, the first Skylab crew, led by veteran astronaut Charles Conrad, lifted off from Kennedy Space Center, carrying with them tools and solar shades to fix these early problems of Skylab. Because of the working conditions, the crew was only able to work in the station for short periods of time, which prolonged the repairing process. Skylab was repaired and visited by three different crews. For the longest mission, the crew stayed in Skylab for 84 days. The reason for this almost catastrophic failure was due to poor design. Air pressure built up inside a tunnel under the shield as Skylab was being launched, which resulted in it being ripped off of Skylab. This mistake by engineers was blamed on lack of sufficient communication between contractors and the space agency. The total cost of this project reached about $2.5 billion. Luckily, there were no casualties from this engineering disaster. Here is a modern Marvel video about the Skylab engineering disaster. Now return to engineering disasters on Modern Marvels. On May 14, 1973, a Saturn V rocket blasted off from Kennedy Space Center to thunderous applause. Attached to the rocket was precious cargo, the $2.5 billion Skylab, America's first space station. But seconds after takeoff, disaster struck. A gap of less than half a centimeter between Skylab's thermal heat shield and the body of the space station allowed a pocket of air to form underneath. The resulting pressure snapped the three aluminum tension straps that held the shield of the spacecraft, causing it to rip away. Soon after Skylab reached its intended orbit, Mission Control realized the space station was critically damaged. The temperatures inside the workshop began to go up, and it didn't take them too long to figure out that they had lost the heat shield during launch. And this heat shield ripped around to solar panel number one. It took it off the vehicle, too. But when it got to the second solar panel, it ripped around it, fortunately, and left it intact. But a piece of aluminum strap from the heat shield riveted itself into the solar panel cover and kept it from deploying more than about a foot. If Skylab's second main solar panel were set free, the space station could generate enough electricity to perform its mission. But without a thermal heat shield, the temperatures inside Skylab would make it unlivable. If Skylab were lost, the future of the American space program would be in jeopardy. The crew of Skylab 2, who were to occupy the space station the following day, had their mission postponed indefinitely. There were questions that had to have answers 
in order for us to go. One was, how can we get some kind of a sunshade over the sunny side of Skylab to cool the temperatures so that it's livable in the first place? The second one is, how do we get that solar panel freed up? Devising a plan for how the astronauts could attach the replacement heat shield to the space station would be the biggest hurdle. Several NASA departments worked on designs that involved the astronauts replacing Skylab's heat shield while performing a spacewalk. But the tethered constraints necessary for a spacewalk would make it difficult to deploy and anchor a replacement thermal shield. NASA engineer Jack Kinsler used some inside information to develop a different strategy. There was a trainer equivalent to it right in the buildings where I work. So I thought, why don't I walk over to the uh, building and look around? There was a uh, camera that was designed on the outboard end of the Skylab, and I saw that camera port, and gosh, I knew it was near the damaged area. So my thoughts just clicked over, and I bet I can put something through that 8-inch port that can uh, expand and get big enough to uh, lay out a very repairable piece of material. Kinsler ran with his idea. Within hours, engineers stitched together a 24 square foot piece of mylar and placed it inside a four foot long, eight inch wide aluminum box that would fit Skylab's scientific airlock. Kinsler then demonstrated his theory to NASA chiefs. Now, there's at least a dozen people there, all the top people from NASA <laughs> that would, could get close to it. And uh, they were there watching all this. So the instant that thing splayed out on the floor, I had them all walk over to me and say, you've got it, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> With NASA's approval, Kinsler's group started building Skylab's replacement sunshade. After the fabric for the parasol was complete, Kinsler worked on designing a deployment mechanism that would allow his parasol to open up in a uniform fashion, much like an umbrella. I had devised a four-way spring. It had four coil springs all set in a little container. They were timed in such a way that uh, as soon as they emerged, they would all spring simultaneously and they open up all four sides. Just nine days after Skylab reached its planned orbit, Kinsler's sunshade was rushed to Cape Canaveral and placed inside a Saturn IV-B rocket, designated Skylab 2. Its crew, Joe Kerwin, Paul Weitz, and Pete Conrad, would attempt to save the crippled space station. On May 25th, the astronauts of Skylab 2 docked with the space station and felt the impact of Skylab's lost heat shield firsthand. The docking adapter and the airlock were not extremely hot because they hadn't lost their heat shield. The workshop where we are now had lost its heat shield and it was about 130 degrees. It was very hot. It was like being in the engine room of an old Navy ship. Pete Conrad and Paul came back down with the container containing Jack Kinsler's parasol. What Pete and Paul did was to take the container, stick it into the sunny side airlock, and deploy the parasol through it. Per Kinsler's design, Weitz and Conrad connected a series of six 32-inch long interlocking rods. They then pushed the assemblage through an opening in the back of the metal canister, attaching it to the parasol. The astronauts then opened the airlock and used the push rod to move the parasol out into space. Conrad then pressed a release knob that activated Kinsler's spring mechanism, forcing the sunshade open. The temperature inside Skylab eventually stabilized at 80 degrees. Days later, the astronauts performed a spacewalk and freed the jammed solar panel. With only one main solar panel, and a makeshift heat shield. Skylab looked worse for wear, but the space station worked. 
Well, Apollo 13 was the mission that, where the crew was saved by, the, by flight control. Skylab was the mission that was saved by the engineering community. It was a great 10 days watching everybody do their job. Astronauts Joe Kerwin, Pete Conrad, and Paul Weitz lived on Skylab for a record 28 days. Over the next 12 months, two additional manned missions to the space station followed. In 1974, the hugely successful Skylab program came to an end. On July 11, 1979, Skylab returned to Earth in an uncontrolled trajectory. It crashed in a remote area of Western Australia, killing one cow. Engineering disasters will return on Modern Marvels.